So you just bought the best Intel CPU at the moment, and it's the Core Ultra 9 285K. However, you want even more performance out of it because you want to catch that pesky Ryzen 7 9800X 3D in gaming, or maybe you just want even more productivity performance. Either way, we can actually do that with the right overclock. So welcome back at Motion PSUs, and here we are with a proper CPU overclocking guide. If you want to catch the 9800X 3D, you will need to also overclock your RAM and to do a few other settings, which I explain in a different video. So you need high-speed RAM, possibly CUDIM RAM, but even just regular 8000 MHz very fast RAM is gonna be good. And the video for DDR5 overclocking is gonna be over here. So follow that one as well. You will also need a very good cooler, like a 360 mm all-in-one from a very good brand is the minimum requirement for you to do this, okay? So you, you can overclock even on a lower cooler, of course, but uh, really, if you don't have the right cooler, the right motherboard, you need uh, a good motherboard with enough phases, I would say not an entry-level Z890, uh, at least uh, 350 bucks Z890 MSRP, I would say. Again, we could do a whole video on buying the right motherboard, but you know, if you have a good motherboard, you probably know because you paid for it. So if you don't have any one of those things, I would recommend you actually go ahead and undervolt. I have a dedicated video on the Core Ultra 9 285K undervolting. Again, we'll be over here or on my channel. I have an undervolting playlist. And basically by undervolting, you can still get a bit of performance gain, but you will not have to do all the compromises in terms of thermals and also you need a good power supply and all that but enough with the disclaimers now this is going to work on every single motherboard in terms of brand so no matter the brand uh, it has to be a z890 and it has to be good but it can be from any brand msi asus gigabyte azrock doesn't matter today i'm on an msi edge uh, but it's going to be the same on every motherboard i will try to tell you the different names because the naming will change a bit but the settings are going to be the same no matter the motherboard so sorry for the long intro and uh, one last thing, if the video ends up working in the end, the only thing I ask from you is to like and subscribe so I can make more of these. And uh, let's go in the BIOS, let's start overclocking. Here we are. Now the first thing we want to do is go into the advanced mode, which on my motherboard you do by pressing F7 or clicking here. So once we are there, we want to go into the overclocking tab, which uh, if you have a different motherboard, may be called something like AI tuning, overclocking, OC, performance, something along these lines. And the first thing you want to do is go ahead and enable, by putting profile 1, your extreme memory profile, or XMP, basically your RAM overclock. Test this out separately, because if you crash, it may be because of an unstable XMP, and I don't want you guys to think that it's because my tutorial is bad. So test this out, then come back, and then let's actually go ahead with the overclock. Now, first thing we need to do is go all the way up until we find something that's called performance preset. Now, in my case, it's called MSI performance preset. If you have an ASUS motherboard, it's going to be called CPU cooler tuning. But how you recognize this is the name of the setting is going to be Intel default settings. You want to put this on the most unlocked possible and uh, say yes to the disclaimer. Now, if you cannot find this, here's how you do this manually. You go into the advanced CPU configuration, you go all the way down until you find the long duration power limit, and you just put all nines on it, on the long duration maintained, you max it out. On the short duration power limit, all nines. And on the current limit, all nines. And now you have basically manually put the performance to unlimited. At this point, we can actually start. Now, it's going to be a static overclock. I don't like the curve option. I think it's hard to find stability. And I tested it. And you actually get less performance in the end. So this is the best way to do it. So we go ahead and on our PICO ratio, we want to start from 56. Okay, this is just starting point. No worries, we'll go much higher lately. <laughs> then we want to go all the way down until we find our E core ratio. And now E core, we start from 49. And then our cache, which is going to be called ring ratio or something along these lines. And on our ring ratio, we want to put 41. Now the cache is going to do probably the least amount of increase in gaming, but it's still free performance and uh, it doesn't really increase in power. So let's do that one also. Now we go all the way down up until we find our voltage option. And now we want to manually set all of these options in override. So CPU P core voltage override, CPU E core voltage override, CPU ring voltage mode override. Uh, if you have a different motherboard, it may be called fixed instead of override, but it's the same setting. And now we want to set our baseline starting point voltages. So we are starting from the P cores. And on the P cores, 
we are putting just a nice safe to start 1.3 on the e course we are putting 1.25 And on the ring, we're putting 1.1 right there. Perfect. You can overclock in two different ways. You can go descending or upward trending. Okay. Now, what I like to do is to go upward. What am I talking about? I'm talking about the voltage. So I like to start from a lower voltage. And then if my PC crashes, I put more voltage. What you could also do is you start from a higher voltage and then you lower it until it crashes. Okay, it's just personal preference. So tricky part is finding the baseline, but I've just given it to you. And the baseline is 1.3 for the P core, 1.25 for the E core, 1.1 for the ring. What you do now is you save these settings, you go into Windows and you see if it works. You need to run proper stress tests for a while. I recommend Prime 95 and make sure it's running. If it's not running, you need to either increase the voltage or decrease the clock, but we are overclocking. So we want to go as high as we want on the clock so we are of course going to increase the voltage and here are my maximum safe limits for you guys to use okay so for the p core i would not go higher than 1.4 and 1.4 is if you have a very good cooler okay i don't recommend you guys overclock until your pc is uh, burning i would recommend you guys stay under 90 degrees in the high 80s is fine but don't go higher because if the temperature gets higher, your CPU degrades faster with the uh, voltage. So, uh, for example, 1.4 volt may be safe at like 5 degrees, but it may not be safe at 90 degrees. Makes sense? So, I know people who are daily driving 1.45 on the P-Core. I would not do that. I would do 1.4 absolute maximum. Personally, I would max out at 1.375 also because it's pretty hard to cool at this voltage. For the E-Cores, I would go maximum 1.3, but realistically, 1.25 is going to be the sweet spot, guys. Trust me. If you're really unlucky, maybe 1.275, but around there is going to be perfect. And the ring, you can go 1.15, but uh, chances are, if you're lucky, you're going to actually go lower because after you found stability with a clock you like, I recommend you go back to your voltages and try to shave off just a little bit more because the less voltage, the better, okay? So this is it for the voltages. Now, the frequency which you achieve is going to be very personal, depends on your chip. But here are a few guidelines. So on the peaker, on water, realistically, you can get max to 58. And for 58, you need to be pretty lucky. Okay. On the e core, you can get to 50 easily. I think any single one of you can do 50. But 51, I find is really hard for some reasons. Like I can't really get it stable. So I would recommend you guys stop at 50, uh, but give it a shot. And for the cash, 42 is very doable, but uh, I've tried three different i9s and on all of them after 41, just uh, I need so much more voltage. It's just not worth it for what we're doing. So a very good overclock with the right cooling would be, in my opinion, 58 on the P core, 50 on the E cores and uh, 41 on the cache would be like making your PC run a lot better. You pair that with some RAM overclocking done well, and you're going to be really happy and get a lot of free performance. And uh, with that said, video is over, but first of all, remember your promise, if the video worked, drop a like and subscribe. But please, uh, I ask you guys another thing, actually. Drop a comment down below and tell me how it goes. Tell me your setting and tell me what did you end up settling with. And uh, with that said, I hope to see you guys in another video and I wish you a very good day. Bye bye.